Welcome to Jackie's Craft Table. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I hope you're all having a wonderful day. In this video, I'm creating chalkboard cards using Simon Says Stamps February card kit. Here is the featured stamp set. It's called Window Frames. You get this darling pack of sweetheart embellishments, as well as a little bottle of Nouveau water droplets. I'm going to pour these out in my dish here so you can get a better idea of what they look like. They look like little teardrops, they're just beautiful. I really love all of the Nouveau gemstones. They have a beautiful line of them. You get some eighth inch score tape, and I already have a pack of this. I use it a lot in my crafting. Here's mine. You can see that I used it a lot. It's great strong tape. This is a window die, and it comes with a shaker pouch. The pattern paper is called Timeless Rose, and it's from Polka Doodles. You get three beautiful envelopes. And then here is the example page. They always provide you with a lot of fun inspiration. And then the card stock for this kit is called Schoolhouse Red, Cotton Candy, and Ivory. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to make some chalkboard cards in this video. I'm going to start with the balloons frame. I already used the wafer thin die to cut out my windows, and now I'm just going to align the stamps around them. This is the only one of the set of three that is in two sections. I just aligned them up around my window, and I'm using some black cardstock from Simon Says Stamp. I'm going to ink up these stamps with some Hero Arts white pigment ink. I'm eventually going to heat emboss this with white embossing powder, but I want to do my coloring first, and it's kind of hard to color when you have the raised lines of the embossing in the way. So this is where the pigment ink really comes in handy. I pulled out my Polychromos Faber-Castell pencils, and I'm going to do some quick coloring for you. I just love how the colored pencils pop on this black cardstock. On each balloon, I use about three colored pencils. And this one I'm using here is just called Light Flesh, and I use that one on about every single balloon. It's just great to put in some warm highlights on these balloons. You could use a white colored pencil, but I just chose this one today. And I'm going to make these rainbow colored, not in rainbow order, but just lots of fun, bright colors. I love making a chalkboard cards. There's just something really special about them. And of course it involves colored pencils, which I love as well. One of my favorite mediums. So I didn't keep track of the pencils I used, but I'm just, like I said, basically using three on each balloon. And my tin of colored pencils is very disorganized. I've had comments on that before. I can't keep them in rainbow order. They just get messy too fast. I wish I could. But if you guys have any tips on keeping your colored pencils organized, I'd love to hear it. I'm really bad at that. In the past, I used to plan more the colors I was going to use on each project. But my time is so short these days, it seems like that I just, when I sit down, I just grab the colors out of the box and hope they'll work. And if they don't work, they are pretty forgiving, so I'll just switch it out for another color and just continue on. I think this one is my favorite of the trio that I'm going to create in this video. Once I've completed all of my coloring, I'm going to pop it back in my Mini Misty. And this is where I'm going to heat emboss the lines. So I'm going to use my anti-static powder bag first. And then ink it up with some embossing ink, also from Hero Arts. I just love Hero Arts ink. I don't have many, but the ones I have, I just love. And I like to ink it up twice these days. Just to get good and sticky lines. Now, I pulled out a piece of type paper to catch the embossing powder. This is some Brutus Monroe Alabaster White embossing powder. And now I can melt the lines with my heat tool. I just love how that pops off the black cardstock. It's just gorgeous. I 
allowed my heat tool to warm up for about a minute before I brought it to the paper. I put score tape on both sides around these little windows, and these pouches are from MFT, as well as the wafer die. I have other pouches from them, and they're just so much fun to use. So I went ahead and bought a whole set of the pouches because this kit only came with one, and I know I'm going to be making a lot more. I pre-stamped the sentiment that says happy birthday on a little piece of pink paper, and I'm just going to pick that up with the score tape. In the other two pouches, I'm going to pour in some chunky glitter. This one is called Moonstone, and it's from Arteza. They have the most beautiful chunky glitter. And of course, I'll have the links to all of the products I used below and over at my blog. I cut out a piece of orange cardstock and yellow, just a little bit bigger than the window. And I'm just going to adhere those down. I just wanted a little bit of color behind my windows. Just making sure that that's secured tightly and doesn't that look so fun. Now I can put my card together and I'm just using a little bit of black and white cardstock. This is also from MFT, the stripes. And I'm using some dot liner to adhere everything down, except for this panel. Good save, huh? <laughs> I used some of my Jackie's Craft Table glue to adhere this panel down. This is nice because it does give you a little bit of wiggle room. I'm terrible at putting things on straight. Here is where I kind of shift it about until it gets centered. And here is a close-up look at my first card. If you haven't ever tried colored pencils on black cardstock, give it a try. I'm, I know you'll love it. For card number two, I'm going to use the Darling Heart frame. And I'm stamping that with more Hero Arts pigment ink. And of course, more black cardstock. And I'm going to color in these little hearts with reds, whites, and pinks. Here's the light flesh colored pencil again. It adds nice highlights onto these hearts as well. And I'm going into my medium colored pink. And then I'll add an even darker colored pink. I do go back and forth a little bit between these three pencils just to get a nice soft blend. And then I'm putting down a medium to hard pressure because I do want it to show up really well on this black cardstock. And I do multiple layers as well. And it's okay to go over the white lines because they're going to be hidden with the embossing powder. So it is best to actually go close as you can to the white lines. This would be fun to color in on craft cardstock too. It would really look darling. I'm going to have to give that a try. Now, I was having trouble figuring out where to stop coloring the hearts because there wasn't a line showing me where to stop the coloring. So I'm thinking here, <laughs> and I come up with an idea. I'm going to draw in a frame with a ruler and a white jelly roll pen. This is a size 10. They have the white jelly roll pens with a finer point, but I always reach for my 10 size. I like a nice thick line. And I'm just carefully outlining this. And this adds a lot to this card, I think. Now I know where to stop coloring so that I don't get any colored pencil inside the rectangle where I'm going to be stamping my sentiments. Or sentiment, I should say. <laughs> Although you do have a lot of space inside this frame to stamp out a lot of sentiments if you wanted. And now I'm coloring in some of the hearts with just white, and I'm pressing down medium hard. Lots of layers help, then you don't have to hurt your hands pressing down too hard. Sorry, my head gets in the way here. And now for a dark red heart. I'm going to skip ahead here in a minute. I don't want to bore you with all the coloring because I used the same coloring and techniques on the rest of the hearts. But this was really fun just to sit and color in. As you can see in this shot, the white pencil I'm using is actually a Prismacolor white pencil. 
I really prefer the white pencil from Prismacolor because it puts down a lot of dark pigment. It's just lovely. <laughs> a lot better than the Faber-Castell one, in my opinion. And I had to get a new pencil. It's a nice brand new tall one. I go through the white pretty fast, and you can buy them separately. I just picked mine up the other day from Hobby Lobby. Once I've finished my coloring, I'm going to pop this back in my Mini Misty. And I have some hearts and the Love You sentiment placed on the inside of my frame. I'm going to pick those up with the door of my Mini Misty. I'm going to stamp out the three hearts first, just using some more white pigment ink. I'm just going to stamp the two hearts at the top and the one at the bottom for now. And I wanted to do this so that I could color them in before I emboss my lines. It's so much easier to color in your images before you emboss it. And I'm just doing them with a single pencil each, a white, a pink, and a red. I'm putting down a lot of pigment so it really shows up well. Once my coloring is complete, I'm going to emboss the lines of this image. And I forget to use my anti-static powder bag this time. I'm, I forget it a lot. But it's important to use because you can get stray embossing powder and it really shows up on the black cardstock. So I got pretty lucky. I didn't have many strays. I'll ink that up twice. And then I can just pour on my white embossing powder. And of course, it doesn't emboss the lines that I drew in, but the Jelly Roll pen is dark enough that it shows up really well on the black cardstock. Blends in seamlessly. You can't even hardly tell. <laughs> and then once I have that all melted, I'm going to fussy cut this out with my Cutter B scissors. And here it is. I don't often show that on the camera just because I'm so slow at it. I chose a piece of the pattern paper from this kit as well as a piece of the red cardstock. The red cardstock I cut down to five and a half by four and a quarter, and the pattern paper just a little bit smaller than that. And I lost the footage of me putting this card together, so I'm going to show you a finished shot of this card. I put some foam tape behind my heart frame and added a few of the sweetheart embellishments around it. On card number three, I'm going to use the beautiful flower frame. This floral frame is very reminiscent of a card kit that Simon Says Stamp released last year. It had a lot of these floral frames in it of different sizes. I don't know if you guys remember that one, but it was another beautiful card kit. But I had fun with those floral frames, and so I really loved the flowers around this frame. I'm using this piece of pattern paper as my inspiration for this card. So I'm trying to use colored pencils that match this pattern paper really well. So I'm not going to color in the leaves with green. I'm going to use the reds and the pinks. And then there is kind of a grayish green in this paper. And I found a colored pencil that was very similar to that. The pattern paper from this kit is really beautiful. It's single-sided and it has a really nice weight to it. And it has kind of a sheen to it. It's just kind of shiny. I had a lot of fun playing with it. So how are all of you coming along with your Valentine's Day cards? I know it's not as popular as Christmas when it comes to cards. But I love creating Valentine's Day cards just as much, I think. So I send one out every year to my mom and my mom-in-law. And of course, I make them for my kids and my husband. But this year, I'm going to try to send them out to all of my girlfriends. I've done that before, but it's been a few years. My husband buys me a card every year. Sometimes he signs it, sometimes he doesn't, and just hands it to me. Once he even bought me the exact same card that he had purchased for me the previous year. Exact same card, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> but as long as he gives me some chocolate or something to go along with it, I'm just fine with that. Now back to the card. On this flower, I'm just putting lots of different colors down. 
because the lines of the embossing is going to separate them. So I'm not doing a lot of blending. I just want a lot of color. Here I remember to use my anti-static powder bag. And now I can ink up the stamp with my embossing ink and pour over my white embossing powder. It looks lovely without the white lines, but the white embossing powder sure makes it pop. Now I can melt that powder. I'm being very careful, trying not to warp the card. This is going to be a thank you card. I love that they had lots of different sentiments from this stamp set. So you can use this set all year round. And I'm going to ink it up onto a piece of pink cardstock. This is my second try at inking this up or stamping this out. You'll see on the other side it says thank you, but it wasn't very dark. So I flipped it over and reused the paper. I'm using another shaker pouch window that I purchased separately. But of course, you could just use acetate. You don't have to use these pouches. But I just love them. They're just so fast and convenient. Now I can pull off the release paper. And I'm going to put my sentiment in the mid middle window. I'm just going to pick that up with the tape. Sorry, my head gets in the way again. Just want to make sure that's aligned. And then for the other two windows, I'm going to put in some pretty pink posh sequins. They're called Strawberry Burst. I just love these. And I end up using up the whole pack. I've had these for a while. Some of them get stuck to the score tape, but I can just gently pull those off and put them back in the window. I'm using some more pattern paper to seal up these last two windows. And then I can just trim off the excess. I'll fix that side in just a minute, but I just wanted to cover up the shaker windows. And then I can just trim that down to size. It's easier if you flip it over. <laughs> I'll use some dot liner to put this card together. And I have a white card base. Next, I can add dot liner to the piece of red cardstock. Sometimes I use the dot liner and sometimes I use liquid adhesive. I guess either one works just fine. Do you guys have a preference of what you use on putting your cards together? And then I'll use even more dot liner on the back of this panel. I see a lot of card crafters using the mono multi liquid glue, and it is a great glue. But if it gets on your fingers, it is so tacky and it's really hard to get off. So I only use that glue for certain techniques. Otherwise, I just use my dot liner or my Jackie's Craft Table glue. I felt that this card needed a little something more, so I'm going to pull out my Nouveau Drops. These are white. Just add a little dots around the panel. I'm tapping them on the lid of the Nouveau Drops just to make them flatten out a little bit. And that's all there is to this card. Thank you for joining me, my crafty friends. I hope you were inspired. And I hope you get a chance to create some beautiful cards of your own today. So an early happy Valentine's Day to you all. I'll be back with another card video very soon. Have a wonderful day. Bye.